The UN Secretary General says that houses are making a mistake by refusing to meet the UN envoy. The U.S. State Department urges parties to the conflict to de-escalate. The Giants Brigades and government forces continue to advance in Ma'arib amid healthy militia collapse. Welcome to Yemen Today TV. This is the English News with me, Roshan Fouad. United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres condemned the recent military escalation in Yemen and called for an immediate halt to the escalation. In a press briefing on United Nations work priorities for 2022, he stressed on breaking the cycle of violence and called for a ceasefire. What we need is to stop this vicious circle in which things get escalating one after the other. What we need uh, is to have, as we have been proposing uh, from long ago, a ceasefire together with the opening of harbor and uh, uh, airports, and uh, then uh, the beginning of a serious dialogue among the parties. This escalation needs to stop. To that end, the UN chief said that the healthy rebels' refusal to receive his envoy, Hans Grunberg, is a mistake stressing that the United Nations made contact with healthy militia allies to pressure them to meet the envoy. Uh, it is a big mistake uh, for the Houthis uh, not to receive uh, uh, our special envoy. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, we have been in close contact uh, with the different countries that uh, keep a relationship with the Houthis to uh, try to explain to them that uh, it is in their interest uh, and in the interest of peace that our special envoy is able to uh, go to Sana. And I hope that this will take place soon. For his part, the U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, called on all parties to the conflict to de-escalate. The U.S. official said that escalation in fighting only exacerbates a dire humanitarian crisis and the suffering of the Yemeni people. He called on parties to participate fully in an inclusive UN-led peace process. He stressed that they must commit to a peaceful and diplomatic solution to ending the conflict. Likewise, the European Union expressed its deep concern over the ongoing escalation in Yemen, calling on the parties to the conflict to exercise restraint and protect Yemenis. In a brief statement on its Twitter account, the European mission indicated that the escalation leads to loss of civilian lives and the destruction of civilian infrastructure. The statement called on all parties to exercise restraint, protect civilians and participate in the UN-led political process to end the conflict. The United States Agency for International Development said Yemen recorded nearly 960 civilian casualties, 278 deaths, and nearly 680 injuries between October and December 2021. In its latest report, the aid agency said that this represents more than 80% increase in civilian casualties and a more than 60% increase in civilian deaths, compared with those recorded between July and September. It also added that the number of civilian casualties recorded between October and December was the highest civilian casualty count in a single quarter since mid-2019. Healthy militia obstinance has transcended all time and space, and the current military escalation is a clear example of that. It seems that the international community is more united now more than before, especially with recent healthy attacks on Abu Dhabi airport. In response, the United Nations Security Council has unanimously condemned the healthy aggression against UAE. The following report has more details. The United Nations Security Council condemned in the strongest terms the heinous terrorist attacks in Abu Dhabi claimed by healthy militia. They reaffirmed that terrorism constitutes one of the most serious threats to international peace and security. The members underlined the need to hold perpetrators, organizers, financers and sponsors of these acts of terrorism accountable and bring them to justice. The members reiterated that any act of terrorism are criminal and unjustifiable. Today, the Council has spoken with one voice that this egregious aggression by the Houthis as well as the proliferation of missile and other technology that enabled the terrorist attack is a clear threat to the entire international community. The Council has made it clear in its statement today that more international action is needed to address the Houthi threat and hold them responsible.
On January 17th, a series of suspected Houthi drone strikes targeted fuel trucks at Musaffah, along with a construction site at the capital's international airport. Reports suggest three people were killed, two Indian nationals and a Pakistani, and six injured, marking the first known deaths inside the United Arab Emirates stemming from the Yemen conflict. Earlier this year, the giant's brigades pushed Houthis out of oil-rich Shabwa and began gaining parts of Ma'rib. Houthi rebels' recent setbacks made it increase its cross-border attacks following a tet for tad targeting strategy. More broadly, reports indicated that US officials are studying the flight path of the suspected drones and missiles closely. Given the fact that few miles south of Musaffah sits at the prior pace where US troops and equipments are deployed, experts believe that Biden's administration wants to know where the drones and missiles originated, how far they flew, and whether any air defenses systems were engaged. On the other hand, experts in the Yemeni file view positively that this current escalation reignites Yemen's forgotten war as a headline, and thus making more pressure on the international community to push for political talks. For the second day in a row, all regions of Yemen are living in complete isolation from the world after the internet service was cut off since Friday. Healthy militia claims that the airstrikes caused the cutting of the fiber optic cable in Hodeida, which caused the loss of internet service. Sources in Tehrani Yemen denied Houthi militia statement that the internet was cut off due to the bombing of the communication central in Hodeida, confirming that the Houthi is cut off the internet since last night from the company's headquarters in the capital Sana'a. However, local sources confirmed that the internet remained working for two hours after the bombing in its normal state. Turning to Marib, the government forces, with the support of the coalition fighters, were able to impose a tight siege on the Houthi militia in the eastern Balakh Heights and cut off all supply lines from it. Military sources stated units of the government forces were able to cut off all supply lines from the militia members stationed in the eastern Balakh Heights for the first time since the beginning of the battles, and that these elements have no choice but to surrender, as the armed artillery and coalition fighters continue to target militia sites. Still in Ma'rib, the artillery of the government forces targeted healthy militia fortifications in Mal'a and Umri Shrans and inflicted heavy losses on them in terms of lives and equipment, including the destruction of three military vehicles. In Harib, military sources reported that giant forces defeated healthy militia from several areas in Harib. Sources indicated that the forces regained the areas after launching a military operation that inflicted heavy losses among the rebels. Meanwhile, the Giants Brigade's air defenses showed down three Houthi attack drones. Their defenses showed down the Houthi drones while they were hovering over Ain and Harib districts. The Yamni Lam Mine Observatory warned civilians from using the Yatamama Arab Road due to mines planted by the Houthi militia. It said in a statement that the desert road in Yatamama Arab is not safe as a result of the mines planted by the Houthis. The observatory called on citizens and travelers not to use the road except for emergency cases, while taking precautions and caution, calling on the houses to hand over mine maps immediately to avoid the fall of more civilians. The conflict in Yemen has led to significant damage to the health, economy, physical infrastructure, as well as social fabric. It has also caused hundreds of thousands of deaths. While many of these are the result of war direct violence, others are due to the war's indirect efforts, including limited access to healthcare services and hard living conditions. The year 2022 does not seem to be different than the previous seven years. More details on the story are within this report.
Crisis in Yemen remains extremely severe, with over 20.7 million people in need of humanitarian assistance. The crisis is fueled by conflict and is further exacerbated by the economy's decline, natural hazards such as floods or drought, and epidemics, notably COVID-19. Millions of people are now in a situation where they can no longer meet their basic needs, with potentially serious impacts on groups in society with limited social capital and protection mechanisms. In 2021, the conflict escalated in several areas along fluid lines of control, with continued breaches of international humanitarian law, a consequent impact on the protection of civilians. In 2022, the situation is expected to deteriorate further, and the severity of needs is expected to increase unless there is conflict de-escalation, improvements in the economy, revenue collection to sustain the public sector, and available humanitarian funding. With a grave humanitarian situation combined with economic collapse, sustained scale-up of humanitarian assistance is needed now. With the grave humanitarian situation combined with economic collapse, sustained scale-up of humanitarian assistance is needed now and in 2022. Aid agencies' famine prevention efforts were successful, but lack of sustained support now and in 2022 could aggravate the situation further by losing the progress achieved. The international community must seize immediate opportunities to stem Yemen's economic collapse. Robust economic support is feasible in Yemen and could quickly and substantially reduce the size of humanitarian needs. Coming next. Suffocating home gas prices hit Sana'a due to the militia prosperous black market. الواحد مية مية وعشرين ألف والكيس الدقيق بثمانية عشر ألف والكيس السكر اليوم بعشرين ألف كم بعلي بيعطي هذا الراتب كامل لكيس السكر وكيس دقيق المواطن اليمني يعيش في أزمة إنسانية وغذائية مؤلمة من غلا الأسعار وفحشة الأسعار وغلا الصرف والعملة الأجنبية في البلد حالة الحين حالة لما ما أخر لما ندي إحنا شقيرة ما نقدرش نأكل الأكل داخل ما إحنا بحاجة صعبة Welcome back. Escalating military action in Yemen displays more than 15,000 people. Over the past month, killed and injured more than 350 civilians in December and left the country the poorest nation, facing growing hunger and economic collapse with no political solution in sight. They were also created the world's worst humanitarian crisis, leaving millions suffering from food and medical care shortages and pushing the country to the brink of famine. More details on the story are within the following report. Yemen's civil war began in 2014 when the Houthis took the capital Sana'a and much of the northern part of the country, forcing many families to become displaced from their own homes. Escalating military action in Yemen has left the Arab world's poorest nation facing growing hunger and economic collapse with no political solution in sight. In the seventh year of conflict, the warring parties seem to be seeking military victory, UN Special Envoy Hans Grumberg told the UN Security Council. Hans Grumberg added that there is no sustainable long-term solution to be found on the battlefield, and both sides must talk even if they are not ready to lay down their arms. 358 civilians were reportedly killed or injured in December. Grumberg expressed his concern that battles could intensify on other fronts. There is already renewed fightings in Shebwa. Elsewhere, airstrikes have increased and fighting continues along dozens of front lines as attacks have increased on neighboring Saudi Arabia. Moreover, programs providing food, water, protection for civilians and reproductive health services were forced to scale back or even close due to funding crises that happened in 2021. Last year's UN appeal for about $3.9 billion to help 16 million people was only 58% funded, the lowest level since 2015, and UN expects this year's aid operation to need roughly as much money. 
Donors must be urged to sustain and, if possible, increase their support this year. However, the Houthis' escalation must be stopped to improve access for a humanitarian staff and to stop attempts to interfere with their work. Although the humanitarian aid is essential, the biggest drives off people's needs are economic collapse that happened due to the conflict. Humanitarian needs could be reduced by resumption of foreign currencies injections through the central bank and policy decisions to lift import restrictions. Yemenis seem to have lost faith in the warring parties as to think even for a second about the benefits of peace and stability. They've turned to the international community for help. Whether the world takes the crushed Yemenis' complaints seriously or not, that is for days to decide. Moving to economy, the International Crisis Group said that Yemen needs an economic ceasefire as much as a military one. In its latest analysis report, the think tank said that economic conflict is not the only factor driving Yemen's war or preventing its resolution. It urged the UN envoy to launch a mediation track to identify the economic conflict's key players and begin to lay the groundwork for an economic truce, even while the shooting continues. People in Sana'a and other areas under control of the Houthi militia are suffering from a suffocating home gas crisis. This crisis is due to the black market that senior healthy leaders are fostering. This has added to the troubles of people who are already crushed by hard living conditions, especially with the public service workers not receiving salaries for more than four years now. The foreign report has more details. Residents of the Yemeni capital Sana'a and the rest of the areas under the control of the Houthi militia are suffering from a stifling crisis in domestic gas, with the substance available on the black market at high prices. The selling price of a 14-liter gas cylinder on the black market has reached 14,000 Yemeni riyals. According to local media, the Houthi militia relies for domestic gas on shipments transported by land from the safer fields in Ma'rib, while it imports gas for cars from outside. Yemen. The Houthi rebels also interfere in the process of distributing the trailers that reach the distribution centers. These quantities of gas are distributed on the basis of loyalty to the Houthis, while these leaders humiliate citizens and force them to pay fees in order to obtain distribution cards, in addition to asking families to send their children to fight in the militia's ranks. The leaders of the Houthi militia revived the black market for fuel in the local markets under its control by opening active smuggling lines to achieve financial and political gains and exploit the crisis to trade in the suffering of Yemenis. Large quantities of oil derivatives are available in warehouses and stores that constantly feed the black market which is owned by the Houthi rebels. Sources confirmed that in the past two months, Houthi leaders had opened more than 35 sailing points for black market fuel that spread all over Yemen. This also happened in contrast to dozens of mobile tankers equipped with a fuel-filling machine. The Houthi militia closed most of the official fuel stations that were affiliated with the oil company in the governates under its control. And according to the sources, the Houthi militia forces hundreds of citizens and patients who are unable to buy fuel from the black market to stay up for days in long lines in front of a station that was previously affiliated with the oil company on the street. The Houthi militia keep making the lives of Yemenis harder day after day. When will this suffering end? No one really knows. To health, a number of Yemeni governorates are witnessing a widespread of viral fevers amid fears of the outbreak of the new variant Omicron of the COVID-19. Medical sources stated that hospitals and health centers in Thais received dozens of patients with malaria, dengue fever, colds, typhoid during the past days. In Ib, hospitals received dozens of patients with fever and its symptoms for more than a week on a daily basis. Doctors in Ibsa patients of all ages have high fevers, extreme fatigue, strong joint pains, sore throats, and dry cough. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. The UN Secretary General says that houses are making a mistake by refusing to meet the UN envoy. The US State Department urges parties to the conflict to de-escalate.
The Giants Brigades and Government Forces continue to advance in Ma'arib. This is the end of the news. For more, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at Yemen Today English. This is Roshan Fouet. Thank you for watching.